Hi, I'm Howie Mandel, and this is Howie Mandel Does Stuff. My co-host is uh, Jacqueline Schultz, my daughter, um, who is not here at the moment because apparently she's someplace doing stuff. Um, Lou's here. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. And I just want to mention that today is a very special day. Again, we're uh, we're dealing with uh, Magic Screen. Yeah. And we, so we have kind of a live audience watching. Yeah. In, 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 they're at, at the Cine Lounge. They're at the Cine Lounge. Hi, you, you're waving. Are you in the Cine Lounge, people? Yeah. Can I ask? A we question? could. We can hear you. You could talk to me. It's like we're in the same room. Are you? You just wave. That's how you answer. <laughs> okay. And you guys are. You guys are right in the heart of Hollywood. And uh, you guys, it's a Cine Lounge where you can go and see the best in uh, feature films, plus the classics, plus uh, amazing live experimental events. I think this is an amazing live experimental event uh, that you've been around for nearly a decade and uh, it's kind of an intimate setting. There are two locations. There's one in on Sunset in Hollywood and there's also a, a rooftop location on Vine. I would imagine that uh, this is not the rooftop. <laughs> you guys are actually inside, right? Are you talking about the facility or the people have been around for 12 come years? In. Pardon me? Hi, Jackie. You started I started without you. They, because they wanted, it wasn't me. The people at the Cine Lounge said, let's start. They couldn't wait. <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> I hear them saying. It's their fault. Tell my, my daughter's actually upset with me right now because the show started without her. It's my birthday. He doesn't even wait for Happy me. Happy birthday. <laughs> the, uh, oh. Good thing I know the song. Good thing I know the song because what, what's with the your, what's with your hair? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you got bangs. I'm not used to you in bangs. Um, I wanted to switch it up and be a little bit different, and so I decided to get bangs. They look very. So I, what I was just telling, I just Lou put on a hat. Lou put on a hat. You put on bangs. Yeah. And I. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. And there at the, uh, I was just telling people, just before you got here, I was getting like business out of the way. I want to tell people what they're listening to. They were listening to us at the, uh, the, the people at the Cine Lounge. Did they all know each other? The you, could you could talk you to them. You all know each other? Did you all come in the same car? Yes. It's COVID. All right. It's COVID. I don't know what that means. I love, it, it, COVID, you, it's, each person has to be in their own car. I love a live audience. I'm going to try my, my resting face on them. Okay, go ahead. Go. <laughs> wow. A resting like face it. gets a laugh. It's not a, not a big laugh. I also like it because it's a, they have popcorn. You know, they brought us some popcorn. They I have know. There. Where look is at, it? Oh, oh look there. at that. So many. Oh, throw one over. Throw we one. Have... Oh, you should have it. Give one to Lou. Lou, oh. this is popcorn. It's a uh, Dundee. Uh, pop, pop. Dial Dundee. Oh, like the movie. Yeah, that's a little too complicated. What flavor is that? Yeah, uh, the flavor is Australian barbecue. Well, what else? You Throw got? another one on the Barbie. What else? We have sweet chili lime. What else? They have their own line of popcorn in this place. So you go there and you can oh. buy this popcorn and, and a fraction of the money, a portion of the money goes to support filmmakers. Jalapeno. Next. This is good. Okay. Wow. Popcorn of the Living Dead, Truffle, Truffle, Truffaut, Truffle, 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 Truffle is a famous filmmaker. Sorry. Right. I'm right over here. <laughs> Sorry. There's natural corn killers. Oops. See what they done? They took movie titles. Oh. Rosemary salted caramel. Nothing makes oh. for a good podcast to have people eating and chewing. <laughs> let's see. It, let's see if that's true. How come we're eating it here, but you're not eating it there? Oh, you are eating it there. Caramel. Do you like my bangs mm. or should I take them out? Is this I don't something like them. you don't like them? I, don't. I like them. Okay. I'll take you them. look like Mo from the Three Stooges. Okay, no, I'm taking them off. Doesn't. I should put them on. You put them on. I will. Yeah. Every, uh, I'll put them on. It's not salty enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that better? I think that's better. It's been years since I've had the opportunity to go like that. Howie, you look like a hippie. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have a guest today. I love that we're all just eating on the podcast. We have a guest today. Where? Can the guest come in when, whenever he's ready? Can the guest come in? Someone else with great hair. With great hair? Mm -hmm. Louie? Yeah. Our yeah. guest has great hair. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who is it? I only book people with great hair. Oh, this it's has so pretzels important. in it, too. Mm, this is really good. Uh -huh. How Not am I going to... 
I, listen, I love that you guys are there, and I love that you do this during a movie, and you guys are watching. Ew. But, you have popcorn on your microphone. <laughs> you <spit>. I spit. <laughs> Sorry. Or like it's uh, SMR. What's it called? No, not. What's it called? ASMR. ASMR. That's what we're doing. It's not only a podcast. Uh, oh. Are any of the people in the theater getting horny? What? Isn't that what happens? Yeah, oh, they get horny. Supposed, isn't it supposed to be you hear people chewing? And that makes them horny? I think that's what happens. What, what kind happened. of porn have you watched as a kid? I no, you it, don't watch ASMR. You should ASMR. go watch. ASMR? Yeah, play it. Play it. Yeah. When people ASMR? chewing. ASMR? Yeah, it's a sound. What is, it, what is, that, what is that an acronym for? This, uh, you guys probably know in the theater. What is that an acronym? Never heard of this. I learned so much from being on a podcast. Here. This is... Cardi. Oh, Cardi B does it? Cardi B is so loud. She seems like the opposite person for ASMR because it's always... She explores ASMR, so I don't think she's actually doing it. She's just... Let's hear what she does. Oh, there. (laughs) How is that supposed to make you... You know what's weird? What? I just came. (laughs) Sorry, I'm sorry. You, you don't do say that when you're next on a podcast your with your daughter. No, no, I am coming next to my daughter. That is so bizarre. <laughs> All right, so the audience is going crazy. Oh, awkward. Tom, do you think he said awkward? <laughs> are you guys? Is that? Are you already commenting? You guys, enjoy the show. We're not looking for reviews, people. <laughs> okay, anyway, I guess. What, what are you laughing at? Should we stop? I don't know. Is this just annoying? I, from your <laughs> perspective, and I'm talking to the people who are listening in their cars and aren't watching on YouTube, uh-huh. and the people that are watching live. Right. How, four people on a podcast eating. Right. Three. Mm-hmm. This is really good popcorn. But not bad. I had really you got, good. Oh, you what, got chips too. What I'm, percentage? No. What percentage of of this? If it goes to, it says to support filmmakers. How does that work? Hello. I'm talking to you there at the theater. They need protein. You could to talk hold to me. Up the camera. Yeah. So we basically allocate um, a percentage of the uh, proceeds to uh, the Cinelabs Film Fund, and then we accept uh, queries from uh, filmmakers, short filmmakers, or feature filmmakers who are seeking uh, funding, and uh, we, we give we give to about four or five filmmakers per year, depending. And you fund films. Year. All from the podcast? Come sit down. Look who's here. Hi. I watched a little bit. Of- <laughs> They're screaming. Oh, you for just you. got a scream. You got a scream. Oh. Those from people right there. In our Hollywood, audience. In Hollywood. Oh. We have a huge audience. But they're paid, right? No, they're no. not paid. Lou. Okay. Okay. I guess that's all Greek to me. Have a seat. Put on a headset. Join us for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, the gorgeous John Stamos. He is. Uh, thank you. Your left shoe is different. A heartthrob. What are you looking for? His left shoe. There's something wrong with his left shoe. It's not the same. That's not a shoe. He's got a cast on. I don't know why. A boot. He brought we'll his entire. Out. He brought his entire cast. Why are you making such a mess? <laughs> You're making a mess. So we had John Stamos on today. That's good. We have people just drop in and do cameos. <laughs> They don't necessarily he stay or talk to a little Greek and he left. What is this? What is it? Oh, thank you. How did you know it was my birthday? It's okay, bud. How did you know? What happened to your foot? I signed for a charity because I worked for the abused children for many years and you give all the money to. It's a love bracelet. Where do you give all the money to? Where does the money go to? Uh, this, this organization called Child Help, which I've been part of for 30 years. Move the mic toward you. Oh, well, that's, that's amazing! Wonderful. It's a beautiful. It's called um, uh, Saint Amos. I, I, my mom, when I was trying to come up with a, an, uh, a name for my production company, my mom said, "Why don't you call it Saint Amos?" S T dot A M O S. It was great. And then we found out there's a real saint named Saint Amos, a saint of humility. Which I don't know how I got connected to that. But that's, <laughs> we just made it that. I love that. I love you. I got to say that in Let the me. last in the last uh, little while, I've got to know John a little bit better than I knew him in the past. Uh, I, I was a fan, always been a fan. Oh, no. You were uh, um, um, 
you've moved into my neighborhood and have become a neighbor. <laughs> yes. So I've actually become a bigger fan of Billy. Billy is his son. You think he's got great hair. Billy has even better hair. And sometimes he'll be sitting having dinner at the same restaurant well, as me. And Billy will join me and then... And then John. We need to talk about that because you happen to show up wherever I am, and I, I don't know if it's a stalking thing or, you know, obsess, I know. obsessive. Well, thing. today he was going to do a podcast, and we just showed up and surrounded yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So wait. So let me just say this. I've known you sort of off and on for many, many years. I remember. I think one of the first times we met, and I was like, "That guy hustles." I was on Good Morning America or something promoting a show, and you were walking the in the back of my shot on the street you know, promoting deal or no deal. And I said, that guy should be arrested or something. But then, you know, it was you. Um, but now that we're getting to know each other, you're really a, a really great guy. You're super I know. I know. caring. You ain't no and you should, either, buddy. You should get to know no, him a little bit better. Our, yeah, is that what yeah. he says my daughter. Yeah. But let me just... Yeah, but let me finish. Profess. Let me finish. I'm, I'm really impressed with you because I, I didn't know how you'd be. I thought you were, you know, you'd stick rubbers on your head and all that stuff. But you're really a, a, a very, you know... Obviously, That's how I ended up with children. I put it on the smart. wrong part of my body. <laughs> wrong head. Um, very caring, very beautiful man. You, you're just a really special guy I and I didn't realize it until I love you too. recently. So yes, yeah, so I moved in the neighborhood. And, but, uh, this is, the, uh, but this yeah. is what I've learned about you. I've learned about you. Not only, I, I've always thought you were funny, and I always thought that you were a great celebrity. I have, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You're welcome. Why don't Thank you, you. Cough on Luke. I did. <laughs> anyway, we don't have tissues. We have Luke. I thought he wanted to whisper something. <laughs> he, went, he turned around. <laughs> well, I was going to. When everybody like, missed, he turned around to cough away, and Lou leaned in. Don't tell anybody I'm saying this. Yeah, I was going to say. You I don't, went like this, and Lou leaned in, and you just loogied in Lou's ear. So you don't need the Mandels. You're good enough on your own, Lou. Why are you here, Lou? Are you Let playing? me ask you a question. Everybody Everyone's asks. Everyone's question. No, These are essential kidding. questions, Go ahead. and we'll get to them never. You interrupted us a lot in the beginning. Go right. ahead. What's the foot? I want, Go ahead. I want to know, uh, there was a, a thing that you did. First of all. Use you, the microphone, Lou. You've done a thing years ago with Ben Gazzaro. Well, that's right, yeah. Such a creepy fucking thing that you play. Well, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. What, and people don't realize, and then they I'm get an article in the LA Times that you are probably uh, uh, America's most underrated actor. Yeah. Because the things that he has done, you know, they know him as J Jesse, Uncle Jesse. Mm -hmm. But the things that he's done, like the Ben Gazzara movie and what you're doing right now with uh, David E. Kelly. What are you doing with David E. Kelly? Fish. We go fishing. That's good. <laughs> I love that. I can't wait to watch that. Show. Yeah. Um, no, he well, that's sure. um, that's all very nice. I've been around a long time, like you have, and, right? And, you but know, there are people that have been around as long as you and, and me, but they have right. done. They do one thing, or they do, or you know what they do, or that you don't know what they do. But the point is good that your rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to tell him a secret again? <laughs> I'll, let's just, I'll let, just inform you: these no. people are live in Hollywood right yes. now. Hi, everybody. Hi, John. Hi. Hi. Where are they? Is that a? Is that it's the old theater. Tonight Show? Of... No, that's the Cine Lounge. Have you ever been to the Cine Lounge on Sunset? No, I haven't. But you'd think you would get, you know, more people in there. I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> COVID. There's a lot of yeah. Okay. <clears throat> nice to uh, social nice to distancing from the rest of the crowd. You know There's what's... four thousand people there. Uh -huh. This group, I'm social distancing. These are my <laughs> my favorite eight people. There. You know they, all, they all came in the same car. <laughs> You know what's funny, though, look. about them is <laughs> for COVID, they're all just sitting in a group together. Like they're No, not you could tell up. who's together. The, guy, the people on the end, the couple on the end, they're together. Uh -huh. And then that one lady in the middle just by herself. has no problem. So how long have you guys been doing this? A couple of years now? The no. <clears throat> months. One, oh, really? Months. Mm -hmm. This is new. It's very successful, and you guys are really great on here. And you too. You. I, I'm teasing you're you. Very but well. let's talk about you. But I mean, but no, 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 I, I want, want to talk about the Ben Gazzara thing that you did. No. He was, he was. No, no. What were you playing? Describe to the audience what you played. I don't remember. I have. Excuse me. I'm not sick, drink? but I have. Yes, please. Can I somebody bring in some, some liquid? I had a. You uh, want popcorn to wash that down? Here. That's what it's like. I suck. I have something in my socket. How come we're drinking? Pop <coughs> <coughs> Everybody's <coughs> coughing, <coughs> eating. This is the worst. Have some of this. I know, right? This is By the way, they have this thing called Zoom. Why am I here in the studio? Aren't you afraid of germs or stuff? No, no, not. Well, that's why they're not here. Not with know. you. But we're trying this new technology where we could be in every theater. You could actually sell tickets. Right, Speaking right, of right. podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, John has probably the coolest. the coolest podcast ever. Not only is it a cool podcast, he has an amazing voice. You're like a, I didn't know that you were like a, bro, a, a vocal broadcaster. But, Me either. And I was that. lucky enough to go to lunch. Which is a great the, story. It is. I was lucky enough to go to lunch with the subject of this podcast. I'll let you, because you tell it so eloquently, mm -hmm. but how you met this guy and what it is, listen to his podcast. All right. Well, we well first of all, you know, I did move in, you know, down the street from you. We did Ellen. You were hosting Ellen that day, which was weird, right? It was the echo on was, Zoom. Yeah, you know, it wasn't good. But you should have came to my house. 
You but, had um, COVID at the time. Oh, I did. No, I didn't. I was, but I was, I was um, quarantining because I was around on my on the TV show around somebody. But we wanted to get together. And we kept making, you know, plans and plans. And I swear to you, every time I'm at this Commons, which is down the street from our place, how why don't you give how everybody the address so they can all show? Up? Well, it's the Kardashians, you know. Talking about it's funny that it's called Commons, though, right? <laughs> like the one percenters that that shop there and eat there are not commoners, but um, Howie's always there and. <laughs> We were trying to get together, and, and he called me or he texted me. and said, "Where are you?" I said, get I said I'm, "I'm at lunch at the Commons with the guy who kidnapped Frank Sinatra Jr." Oh, you want to really? join us? And he's like, "No, I can't." I said, "Come on, come on, come on!" And it was a great lunch because, you know, Barry Keenan is the guy. He was um, he was uh, lived in L.A. Very smart guy. Was one of the youngest guys on the stock exchange. His father was a big uh, broker, and he lost everything. Lost all his parents. Money. Loved his parents. He was a real family guy, and was alcohol and drugs and was parked in his car and he was trying to wait for a sign and it was, it was overlooking Balboa Island and there was, I mean, he was on Balboa overlooking Catalina and there's, you know, lightning and thunder and God's voice came on the radio and said, kidnap somebody. Yes. And the radio wasn't even on. He said, and it was like no women, no children. That, by the way, is how you know it's God's voice when the radio is not even right. on. Right. You go like, there's gotta be God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good Lou. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so that's the story. So, I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's. Uh, no, but he told, so I got to sit with this guy and you got to listen to the podcast. I don't want you to give it all away here. Well, it's because, a fascinating story. But he has the actual guy. John takes you through with the guy, step by step, everything that is going through his mind, the planning, the uh, actual uh, taking of Frank Sinatra Jr. in Tahoe and then brought him back to here just a few blocks from here. Yeah, he, put him in right. a, he put him in a house here mm. and he was like this haphazard kind of guy who left some of the shit that he... Had, yeah, he wasn't a criminal, you know. He just said, he, he just says he was so desperate and he conned his two buddies into to doing this with him and they, they tried a couple times. The third time they tried was the day that Kennedy got shot. And not and a good day to kidnap. Not a good kidnapping day. And he and you know with Sinatra's you know relationship with the with the, uh, with the <laughs> <that's> good. <laughs> good audience uh, uh, with with Sinatra's connection with the Kennedys. So he waited two weeks and he said, "Well, that was you know I was in Dallas. I have a schedule to keep." Goes to Tahoe, gets him, gets him out of there. But, but everything goes wrong. You know he can't get the gun out of his pocket. He's never shot anybody. But they had to tie up another guy. They didn't know how to do that. They get they get Sinatra Jr. past all the roadblocks in, in Tahoe. There's a snowstorm going on. Somehow they get him, you know, through this is a bit of a Munchausen syndrome they, they used later and stash him at this house in, in, in is the it valley. Is it one episode? That this no, story? no, 10. Oh, this, good. Eight, yeah, yeah. Good. Is good. it 10? It's 10. I There's two it. bonus. Uh, I'm going to listen to it. Okay. You got to. Everybody has to listen. I love to this. this story. And not only it's that, crazy. his voice is so. Well, it's the microphone. What is that? Thank Thank you. Hi, David. David, oh, David uh, Dobrik. Dobrik. David's David been Dobrik. here since last week. Thank you. Been... I was, this says Lou. No, what? David Dobrik. Dave, let, say hi to the live audience. Hi, guys. Dave. No, what do you, no, David there. Lou. Look. Look. Oh. John hi. Lou. Hi, you know, when I, when I came up here, I saw David through the window, and I know you, you're used to, you do pranks and stuff on, on this show, this right? This is not a prank. So I was like, is there, are they, I was walking, like I was walking on ice, I was like, are they going to, where's the, you know, because David was here, I thought it was a like prank. You thought they were going to prank you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I still hey. think it's. Did you um, get suckered into a video? Did you shoot a video? Sure, of course. Yeah. yeah. John, just, John David, Stamos, can I tell you something? My nephew's name is David John. Ben Gazzara. My nephew's name is John. Okay, that's a question. And I call him John for short. Instead of Jonathan or? Uh, no. Just John. John. Okay. Good, Lou. Um, wait, it, so what was your Ben Gazzara? He was cool. He was drunk. And I, I was, I remember, that was one of the things I remember. Was he like, drunk? Yeah, but that one, he was, he was great. But I just remember like, wow, like somebody you drinking during the day. No, thank you. You, you, you played a, a guy that went out and, and procured girls. Was that what it was? No, no that's think. in real life. That's and not he, the movie. <laughs> and Ben Gazzara encouraged you to do it. You're, he was your father. Was that? No, I think you're thinking of another movie. Am I? I think. I think. Am I really? or was I a, pro, a, pro, a male prostitute? No, male you, were, hook, you, you uh, were raping women. Oh my God. No, I great. wasn't. Great. Bring that up. Lou, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I think what you were talking about was I played a cop. I think, I think that you're was wrong. With a, with you played a cop. Am I wrong? Completely well, wrong. I can't remember, but I think you are, yeah. How can you forget what you I think David Dobrik's publicist is still here, too. Maybe we can I've borrow her for a second. <laughs> Jackie, let's talk to you. I want to talk to you a second. Okay. So, what kind of. But he must have been a great father, but he was. Tell me about it. Tell me about your childhood with him. We've talked about it a bunch. I haven't heard. I didn't listen. Okay. Just give me, just <laughs> you give don't me listen to our podcast. We listen to yours. Yeah, yeah I, listen, I, I, I think watched, you're so confused no. right now. I watched today. That's the way you are. You no. watched today. 
But the thing about it, let's oh, talk let about me, you. No, no, no. But let me just find out. I mean, he must have been a great dad. But yes, that's it. He is, he was, greatest, and is a the great dad. dad. Yeah. Very overprotective. Right. I was first born and a girl. So right. it was really, Why really hard. Girl? Huh? And, yeah. <laughs> so it was really, really hard. I mean, like, he took the door off the hinges. Huh? I did. Why? Were you because there were people out? like John Stamos in the world. I'm well. Uh -oh. See what happens what when you hell? curse me? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Are you a really strict dad? Well, he's only. I'm sorry. It's something I. Ate. Of course, I was gonna. Do you guys hear that feedback? No, is it just me. Just you. <laughs> I think I'm fine. Happy to have <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty over. I'm always worried that he's gonna kill himself or kill us first because he's, you know, he's a boy. It's different. He's so cute. He, he, um, Howie. We were at a at the restaurant and Howie was there with your mother, who is lovely and and. He kind of hogs all the spotlight. You know, anytime you see him, he's like, blah, 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 you know, in front of your mom. And I always say, hi, Terry. Nice to see you before, you know, how he dominates everything. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. 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 No, that's him. No, I, for I, sure. I, I seek attention. She's, well. I mean, this was supposed, I was supposed to be on the title Look, of this not, podcast. She's my really? not, not even not on the title. Are no. you going to do another podcast? Are you an actress too? No. Oh. You should be. She was a teacher. As were a you, teacher. You were, did you come to my house for Halloween or was that your other sister? No, that was yeah. her. And the, uh, was the other sister there? No, it was just me her and my and two her, kids. and her that's children. Right, yeah. Yeah. I have some well, I got to say, his, that's what I was going to say. Go his house is to die for. It's amazing. But not only that, you are the biggest Disney, what do you call it? Like a freak. You're a Disney freak. Lou is, Lou is having stomach issues. No, I'm just enjoying the beverage that yeah. went along with the sandwich from the chips. <laughs> Where are you from, Lou? <laughs> was he a stand up? It was funny. Toronto. I'm Toronto. Toronto. He, Canadian. He did stand up. Okay, but I don't know where he's from originally. Uh -huh. Are you from Toronto? Originally? Mm -hmm. My family. Oh my God. Do you guys. Is this good, this podcast so far? Uh, where are they? In Burbank or somewhere? No, it's Sunset, on Sunset Boulevard down oh. in Hollywood. He was like, yeah, so so. It's right. not good? You're not enjoying it, guys? <laughs> You're paid. You're paid. My paid family them, right? is Greek. Nobody paid. <laughs> Are they really? Are they really? Yo, I thought you're Macedonian. Well, this is the thing. This That's is the thing. Everybody on that Let couch me explain is just this to you. Let me explain this to you. They spoke. They came from Greece. Uh, they spoke Greek, but they spoke to me in Macedonian. That's weird. The confusion. It is because I didn't understand a fucking word they were saying. Uh -huh. Well, that makes sense. All right, anyway. Jackie. Let me let me. So, what being like? What but I'm talking what, about your house. Hold on a second. What <laughs> What are some things that your dad did that was great that I could do with my child? Do a podcast with her. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> I, just, no I appreciate. Can now. I just say though? Just I, a, I, I, okay. one of, before, and I'm going to answer that. I just want to say because I'm on. I got this train of thought. Okay. He has Walt Disney's original phone. Mm -hmm. He has uh, some of the characters from Pirates of the Caribbean. They're all in his house. <laughs> he has uh, from the uh, Dumbo ride. You have the Dumbo. My my mm -hmm. your kids. I took a picture. <laughs> Check out my Instagram of my cool. kids sitting in the Dumbo ride in your living room. That Plus, he was a Beach Boy. Plus, he is you were still, a Beach Boy. Still. Thanks, Luke. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're a multi-talented guy. Well, you know the Greeks are so proud. They must think you're the best thing that ever came <laughs> on the planet. I was in a cab once with a Greek cab driver. Yeah, and he told me I was Greek, and I said, you know, I'm Greek, and he said, you know, Einstein. The Greeks. The Greeks came up with the theory of relativity first. He's getting that from my big fat Greek wedding. That's just the, the, the father theory of that. relativity just, first. But, just... but, 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 he okay. forgot it. Oh, this is a big fat Greek wedding. He's doing this. Is but that you're what you're taking from? <laughs> yeah. No, it's oh. that's the way my family. Died. I love. Um, I love. The, my father was Greek and my mom was English Irish, and just um, I can't talk with it. I mean, it's okay if you, you know. What? What do you hear? Him. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I'm very proud. I was proud of him. He just being eats chips. Cute. That's his thing. It's just a lot of uh, podcasts have background music <laughs> yeah, we have, or a uh, rhythm. Yeah. We just have Lou <laughs> eating I'm chips. Sorry. That's okay. Lou, no, please. He, We've he heard can't. these stories a hundred no, times. No, because he's so nice. He's so nice. No, no, you are too. I, um, My dad was really, uh, was, was sort of strict, but, but, but very... You know about it was all about discipline, discipline, on, and you know showing up on time and knowing my deal. And I worked at my dad's restaurant. Hmm. You like this? It's about food, right, um, Lou? It's uh, he, I worked at my dad's restaurant. You know, and then I I got on. I, I was auditioning for general. I got on General Hospital, and I my, went to a General Hospital. You need one, kind of, kind of the same. Uh, he got on it. I was in it. He's talking about a soap <laughs> opera. I'm talking about the actual yeah, hospital. hospital. Yeah. What time is he done? Soon. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, where was I? I have no so, I was, so I'm still working at my dad's restaurant, and I got on the show, and um, and it was a very popular show at the time. And um, 
he wouldn't let me n- not work because I worked on the weekends. Like, You're my Sunday guy. What, Dad? I'm, you know, come on. And I would you do were the soap on, opera. You were on, on the, the show. General Hospital and uh-huh. working in the restaurant. Yes, in front of people. Yes, yeah, ba- so, back room. No, in front. It was it was the co- thing, and and f- and the show would started to air because it was like a two or three week turnaround. And I'm like, Dad, you know, and people were like, Hey, can we have a? Che- Are you that guy? <laughs> no, give me a cheeseburger <laughs> and a thing. And finally, it was like, you know, a lot of girls. Were sc- I said, Dad, I'm famous. I gotta quit. You know, <laughs> but it was it was a great. You know, it was a, that's how he, that's how it was. Uh, well, she family. worked like crazy all her her upbringing. But I uh, was I'm very conservative, even though people think I'm a little nutty. No, I would think you're conservative. I would think you would. Yeah. So the, the, I was really and concerned because you have. I know you have a sister. But I was two sisters, yeah. you have two sisters. I didn't have I only had a brother, so I was really mm-hmm. concerned in raising a girl. I had no yeah, idea. Must have been, yeah. I had and and I was really nervous. So that's why I took the door off her room. And sure. if any boys came to the house, I was just if you I was a nightmare. The, if you took the door off the room, it'd be easier for her to get in and out, wouldn't it? It wasn't about her getting in and out. It was about out. him watching me. Oh, 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 that's creepy. What? No, <laughs> not watching her. <laughs> not right. why. It was making yeah. sure that I wasn't right. doing anything bad. If you take a boy in your room and you close the door, right, right. why, right. why, why right. does that's she right. need to well, do Well, why that? is a boy going in upstairs or wherever her room is? Anyway, there was no, there wasn't allowed in our, like our rooms were upstairs, no boys upstairs or girls upstairs. But will you allow your son to have a girl in his room? No. Was, was it, no. No, not in my house. See, my brother really? was allowed to have girls in his room with the door closed. I wasn't allowed Good. to have. Really? Are you going to, because you I have a, so. you have a reputation preceding you as far what are you as talking about? being a Thario, uh, you uh, you were uh, busy before you were married. You're a happily yeah. married man. Yeah, and wouldn't you want? Would you would you want the same for your son? No. Well, I mean, I think a lot of that Lothario stuff. You was were blown a cast of Eddie's. I think I was trying to say you're a cast of Eddie's. Uh, maybe no. I think uh, go back to sleep, Lou. The uh, <laughs> I think to be honest with you, I was I li- I actually really liked Lou a lot. You're gonna talk you're to gonna you scrub your paper. Don Juan talking- cast of Eddie's. That's who you are. I really wasn't as much, and I think there was a lot of, this was part of sort of me finally growing up. I got sober about six years ago, which was a big help, and um, I was, uh, I think I was sort of, I really wasn't that guy, but I think people thought I was, and I think I had to sort of keep that going for people. What do you mean you weren't that guy? Well, I really wasn't. I went, I was always kind of bad early. I really didn't date as many girls as you as you might think. Or you listen to Howard Stern or whatever. That's, that's a, what I was listening to. But it's a, you know, he would paint a picture of this guy that I, and my dad too, God bless him, it was a different time. He was like, you gotta be a, you know, a real you're coxman talking about, there, You're you talking know? about fame, right? Your dad you're said be a coxman? Well, he, he did like, like a Warren Beatty, you know, like you gotta be like a Dean coxman. Martin, you know. He was pushing that. He, he, yeah, but not, not to be, you know, rude to women or anything, just to that image, you know, and so I kind of played into it when it started to happen. Happened, but it really wasn't me and i think what i finally said what am i like i don't need to please these people with this this bullshit right you know um right Lou, that's you the know, thing you, about it, fame this is the thing about fame i would brought it up in an earlier podcast about ahead. fame yeah it's a bitch man uh-huh okay <laughs> but some of your idols and like elvis right. was kind of a ladies man and i feel right. like that was kind of your persona a little bit i don't so, know but i was always in long-term relationships i always wanted to be married always wanted to be married always wanted to have a family and have kids i was never you never saw you like hanging out at the playboy mansion or that so i was really you know so knowing this was it not hard for you because your relationships that you did have were uh-huh. very public i think relationships are tough enough anyway but yeah. to, to have them play out in front of people there was only a few it wasn't it wasn't that much but um i don't think that hurt anything no no that, right, not right, Lou, to, I mean, not to me, John. It right. didn't affect the way I felt about you. Are you on a dating app, Lou? No. No. He's married. You married? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I, married. I thought I saw him on something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, so no, but, 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 but yeah, I dated a little bit, but it was more of a, it was more of a, I, I'm telling you the truth. And I always had such respect for women. I my, my grew up with two very strong sisters and a beautiful mother. My father was a great, you know, example of how to treat women. And I just was never, I was just thinking about this today. There was, a, the, you know, I was, I went to sleep you so to sleep. early. You know, my friends would call me the pee waster because I'd be, you know, that girl wants to have, I'm tired, you know. And I was always very afraid of, <laughs> I was always very, waster. <laughs> I was always afraid of. What does of, that mean, a pee waster? He wasted his penis. Come here. No, 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 no. The last time I did that, you coughed in my chest. Now that you have something to tell, he John, won't yeah, leave. Now it. you don't want to leave. Tell me, tell me uh, what the fuck happened to your left foot? My foot, I have a, a, a brace. Here. No, that's on your right foot. What happened to your oh, my left, left foot? foot? Yeah. That's just a bad tennis shoe. Okay. <laughs> what, why do you? <laughs> they like tennis shoe jokes. They like yeah, tennis shoe. That's yeah. what they respond to. This what, was what, uh, a horse. Uh, stepped on my foot around my neighborhood. Uh, you'll hear from my lawyer soon, Howie. You really got stepped on? No, that's nothing fancy. I had an operation a couple of years ago, and I had to get it done. A year ago? 
Well, I just had it redone because it didn't work a year ago. You're making enough money. Get a real fucking car. You think doctor. I was, yeah, yeah, you know what? I got it at the car wash. I shouldn't get my. <laughs> you guys, your foot surgery. I went to the bowling alley and they. How long do you have to wear that? Surgery. Another couple of weeks. Are you not shooting your show? No. I should start in February. I'm doing some voice. Oh, I can't talk about it. Anyway, you show? can't talk about it? What's your current show? It's called Big, Big Shot. Shot. I play. Um, he plays play the coach, basketball coach, basketball coach of a girls' team. Oh, and what does amazing. it mean to you to be on yeah. Disney Plus? Because you're such a huge sense. fan of Disney. It's great. Yeah, yeah I'd be I got Disney I Plus to watch Get Back. Did you watch Get Back? Yeah. Did you watch? It? Did you guys watch? <laughs> Not it? yet. You didn't love it. You I hear it's, a, a, it's great. It's fucking great. He doesn't love it. it you know, it's very, very it's like to watch these guys. You know, write that music, it's creating it. Un, yeah. yeah. It, it starts off a little slow. But you did that with the Beach Boys. Well, I didn't write any those songs. No, no. I thought maybe you you rehearsed with them. Right, in, he plays it. He tours with them all I the time. Know, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's he's what, a that's really the, good. Uh, what do you like better, music or acting or well, producing? Well, like you, like you said earlier, like we're so lucky to do different things all the time. As soon as you kind of get bored with the, yeah, you know, the sitcoms or thing, then I, you know, do drama or mm -hmm. TV. Then I, I did five Broadway shows over the last twenty years. I go, you know, tired of TV, get on stage. Did you do theater? No. You did. Oh no. Well, I, you, you know, theater. Well, I, mean, and, I got, I, I got called to do some Broadway. I could not do that. Really? I could not. Well, was I'm it, be, am I allowed to say what I think? Was it Susical? Susical, I got did. I, 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 oh, I called I for that. that. Oh, Calcutta, you, Lou would have been good. Eh? I know. You know, I don't was, like, I cannot. Um, oh, Calcutta is an old nude. I like stand up. Right. It's all nude. But that's, but that's a whole piece of theater in itself, obviously. I mean, you did. What did you, what plays were you in? I did, um, you guys did your research around here. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, I was in, we didn't do research. No. You didn't, yeah, okay. I did. Um, this is the thing too that I got from my parents was like not to put any and maybe they did this with you too that don't put any bound don't put any obstacles in your way of like you want to do something you know do it I'd never been on Broadway for sure I wasn't much of a singer um, I wanted to do theater but I'd never done much and and I'd done a show with Jack Klugman called You Again and, and I loved him so much I, I love, love all these Jack, Jack Klugman and great stories with him too and he was a mentor but I, after Full House it was a little tough because that you know it was just people thought of me a certain way and I said Jack what do I do go to the theater or go to the theater. And there was an open, Matthew Broderick was leaving How to Succeed in Business. And he just won the Tony for it. And where the fuck do oh I my get God. the balls to go think I could do that? But I just, I thought, you know what? If I sing for 10 hours a day and dance for 10 hours a day, I can learn this. And I went in and got it. And that was my first Fucking one. Amazing. How did you like it? I loved it. I yeah. just loved it. Yeah. When you talk about mentors and the way you, I, I'm also impressed with you is the relationships that you've had in this business. And one of the relationships for me that was legendary as far as knowing you was your relationship with Don Rickles, mm -hmm. which, uh, you, you know, I you saw, know, did you guys hang out? At all? I, I got to work with him and I got to know him, but not like you did. And one of my favorite, um, there's a talk show appearance that is so moving to me where you kind of came out with him mm -hmm. and was it on the tonight show maybe yeah and and you were and you kind of said know. this is like the father the, you know i think your real father had just passed mm -hmm. and he was helping you through this and you were just there for him oh, like man. even when he was getting old it was just a, you could feel it coming through the screen what this guy meant to you and don rickles for those that didn't know him was a really sweet man yeah, anyhow yeah, even yeah. though he had that kind of rough exterior and and that yeah. act but to see how you well, one of the great things about being as lucky as we are to work and be in the business is, is like just to meet the people that you idolize. I mean, have you met everybody that you wanted to meet? Like, have you? I'm not. Who was to your, be, I'm very. Me? I know that I, I chase you all around the yeah. commons and I mean, stuff really like does. that, but I am socially awkward so right, i right. don't really right, want right. to meet anybody really? i'm really no, uncomfortable no big stuff look no i, I i'm Carrie, steve I, martin steve you martin? Met steve i met martin. steve martin how was that uh, just... uncomfortable for okay. me because right. he's not he's not um i'm not kind of uh, outward well you say that but 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 have you gotten over that because you you see no. outward to me we sat and talked for hours we, you we, make we, it easy because you are but, much more outward you are very personable much more personable than i am really? and you're the I, yeah you said i'm having this business lunch with the guy that that took uh frank sinatra jr come and join me i yeah. was just sitting at home i went oh, it's a okay. great story okay and i got to sit down with this guy i'm telling you that that is a highlight of my life really that you get oh absolutely a gangster i mean you know whatever. i know but when do you get mm -hmm. an opportunity like that to sit He's down a fascinating and, guy and he really you know paid his dues and how did that but, happen how did you connect with him and decide to do it as because a this is another point i want to make up he's also and this is what i respect about him not only a drummer not only a great actor not only a a, a great voice talent but you're very <laughs> entrepreneurial <laughs> no he is he is the the uh you know david dobrik who just walked in has a show on discovery who do you think whose show is that 
It's his show. It's his show. Yes. So that's what gonna, he that's what say. he it's produces movies. He finds things that he's interested I'm in, like not you. necessarily for him. And he, yeah. because he wants this story to be told and because he wants it out there, he gets it done. But we're so lucky to have all that. The, I was at, a, I, through the Beach Bros, I met Jan and Dean, who were Jan also- Jan and Dean, the, right. And they were playing at the Orange County Fair, and I was I was 20 years old or something, and um, we're sitting backstage, uh, and Dean says, um, uh, he says, do you produce movies? And I said, oh, yeah, I produce movies. I didn't know that. He said, I have the rights to Frank Sinatra Jr., the guy who kidnapped Frank Sinatra Jr., and he handed me this big oh, manuscript. Oh, okay. And he said, he wrote this in, j in prison, and, you know, and that was 20, 20, 25 years ago. I didn't know what to do with it. And I saw him about four years ago. Whatever happened to that story? Said, you want to know something? Yeah. You want to know something? Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm going to say. You right. guys right there. So this is at the Cine Lounge. Cine Lounge. They sell their popcorn. I'm not, this is not an ad. Is this an ad? No, popcorn. no, no, it's not an ad. Go ahead. But I, this is the first time I've been working with them and they sell like the, the, all these different flavors have different- Apocalypse uh, now? Yeah. Popcorn, yeah. But a portion of this goes to fund filmmakers. Mm. You know, this is a movie that needs yeah. to be made. I don't know what you guys, is this, is this how it would be? Like if somebody had an idea, do you guys fund that? Yeah, we throw money to that. What? They might have been there. <laughs> what did you say? Say that again. They threw money at it or something. We would throw. We would potentially throw popcorn money popcorn to that project. Money. Got it. Got it. Got it. So they would. They right, would. Well, they would good. give you development funds. Okay. Doesn't that sound like a good? Does that sound like a good film? Yeah. It's. It's. Uh, I think it sounds like an amazing film. I had lunch with this guy. The story needs to be told, and <laughs> even if you don't know. Uh, if you're young now and you have no idea about Frank Sinatra Jr. or that moment, because I was a, you know, it's kind of like when Kennedy was shot or it was all over TV when Frank Sinatra Jr. was yeah, Nobody heard about it. Till, like you bring it up to people and they go, I don't know, I don't know. And the movie never got made because Sinatra didn't want it made. And he put a hit on Barry a couple times. Remember the he was telling you that at that lunch, one of the last hits, there was a guy, you know, Frank, it went on for 40, 50 years. These hitmen were so old, this guy had Barry in his, in his sights, this old mob guy, and his colostomy bag broke. <laughs> he told me that. Spilled all over his that's, thing, and he missed He missed know, the Barry shot, and, and Barry, that. that's why Barry's alive. But wait a second, we're, we're, we're saying here that Frank Sinatra put yes. a hit. On the guy that he has the rights to the story. That he said, I want this guy dead. I want he took his son. son. Yeah. Kidnapped his son. Do you have kids, Lou? No, but uh, if I did, uh, you'd put a hit on people. But, yeah, it's yeah. scary. So is this like a what a one-off podcast? Like you do, just did it for this story, or are you going to look for like another story? Or wait, another so let person? me just see if we can get something going here. Is there somebody there who who's there that <laughs> I could talk to that has the funding? What kind of funding are you talking about? Popcorn money, they just said. That's Popcorn not. I don't know. Money. No, but what, explain to me what you would do now. He has the rights to this. It hasn't been sold. What would what would what would you do? How does it work? It's a film about this subject that is already in development, not told from the standpoint of Barry, written by someone named Peter Elliott, set up at Netflix right now. No. Oh, no, man, that sucks. No, John? No, I don't know what he's talking about. John, what so the fuck is he you talking about? Do you, you know that for a fact? I know that for a fact. So sell it to Disney Plus or Hulu. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not, but that's you don't not, think that's, that's ha happening? No. Hey, how much is a bag of this popcorn? Mm-hmm. So are you saying are you are you saying right now that, that, that because he has Barry? I got to tell you, I sat there at lunch, hearing it from even the way he tells it and the way it's written and the transcript, which comes from the true story written as the guy in 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 prison. I have no interest in what the, you're telling me. The other guy is doing. Right. I there do could have be interest. more than one. What was that? The something fest. What was that like festival where they had like three documentaries that came out at the same time? On but I'm not talking about a documentary. Fire I'm fest. talking about fire fest. But no, I'm look, just look, saying you can have. This multiple. is a this is an interesting story. It's it's been a little difficult to sell. I had it set up for Netflix. It fell through because Barry couldn't make the deal. Then it sat around for oh, a while. Oh, Barry there. couldn't make the deal. Barry didn't want to, he didn't want to, he wanted more money. He wanted, and then with Brad Falchuk, who just saw the deal there, who I work with on Scream Queens. Uh, uh, Glee, and then we took it out again with Mike Judge, and it, it was, it, you know, the story, it's it's a period piece, and it's, it was hard to do. Netflix, Ted's one of my good friends, and they're, they're not doing anything on this subject. Um, but uh, but uh, the time will come when it's right. I'm just you know. saying these people have money right well, here. Pop, yeah, okay. They sell um, stuff right here. <laughs> we were talking about Rickles. I mean, now we're getting to, uh, your listeners, I don't know if they're this old, but uh, but I was saying that- A lot of them, are the, how old are you? Uh, just yell out your- well, they, uh, they probably know. Your weights and your uh, ages. Uh, <laughs> They, uh, 
<laughs> I got an Arrow Flynn story after this. Okay, good. One of our one of the great things to meet these people. So I just I sort of I sat next to him at the Great Greek over there in Malibu. I mean, he was at a table and I was at a table, and we were sitting next to each other. We were both bored with our the table people we were with. And we just started talking, and he was just a you know not a lonely old guy, but he I, you know, I paid attention to him. He was at this time too. He wasn't. It was before the this documentary came out about him. The research. I mean, I think people just thought he was dead. They didn't think he was as funny as he was, and I just. I just paid attention to him. I took him to dinners and we hung out and we became very, very, very close. He, my father had died a while before that, but his son died somewhere in the middle of that. Yeah. So it was, a, you know, it was that kind of thing. And then he had this great, you know, resurgence with with um, with the documentary that we did. I helped get that. His son really got that going with uh, the book, right? It was the, based book, on the book, and then right? then they did a full documentary on him with. Um, uh, what's the director's from Animal House and all those movies? John Landis. Landis. Landis, yeah, he he came over my house. I think he's still there, but. Um, and it was a great success. And then everybody started coming around. And I loved watching him get the adulation that he deserved. I mean, everybody. And then they said the AFI, and they started doing these other tributes to him. And he would tell me, oh, God, Robin Williams came over today. And it was great. And then, actually, during it was during his time, too, was when YouTube came around. And I got to sit and show him some of his old stuff because he hadn't seen it. And he just loved that. For my birthday, I said, he said, what do you want for your birthday? And I, want, I said, I want to listen to... Uh, Hello Dummy. It was the, the only album oh. that he ever wrote. I said, I want to listen to it and I want to ask you questions about how you did it. And, no, 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 no. I said, you asked me what I wanted. We sat and listened. And I stopped. I said, how did you, how did you do that? Goes, I'm just doing Rickles. I'm just doing Rickles. He never wrote anything. He never had any writers. He wasn't good with writers. Uh, in fact, I got him, I put him on, I got him, I got ER, John Wells and everybody to, to do a great episode. He would have won an Emmy for sure. They wrote this really moving, powerful thing and he got the script and he just, and he Act, he couldn't remember. He was afraid of it, and he just didn't do you it. Talk, are we, I, I lost the story. Are we talking about Don Rickles right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> After the whole story. Lou, the whole st are you going to stand up for uh, your... Let me ask you. Let me ask speaking you. of great Greek, do you know Angelo Tsaroukas? No. How long have you been a stand-up? long time? Did, that, did you guys know it? each other what growing up is in Canada? We did, we did know oh, when we started comedy, but he doesn't do stand-up anymore. Oh, he does. You I do, do stand-up. You, you do stand-up. I do fucking stand-up. Do you know <laughs> Saget and, and all those guys that I work with? They know me. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I have to say that I have such respect for stand-ups. I love... I love you guys. I st I could never do it, but I study well, you. I think I, you could. But that's the thing. Not only that, I, I have to but, say but, but that I'm say, fascinated by you, John. But, uh, that's why I wanted you here. You're probably I, one of the most curious people I ever saw. And I when you, you when you when you get interested in something, right. you kind of you bring it to fruition. And whether it's a story that you heard and you love, you know, or whether it's how you know you're you're nuts about Disney and you collect mm -hmm. and you know the history of Disney and you live Disney. Whether it's the the music that you're doing, whether it's the the, the dramatic acting that you're brilliant at wow. you know you've chased everything and whether you're just being an entrepreneur and getting uh, things on television and in film that you're not in i don't think that people give you the credit yeah. that is due i well, think that if you wanted to do stand-up you could do stand i could I don't not think you I yeah you're very it. funny i, I don't watch you guys you, i don't it's think a, it's a it's a it's well, he's been best friends art, with saget right? for well and, and those guys drive me crazy but i learned so much from bob about comedy and dave and just watch the way they construct jokes the way you guys construct jokes it's a it's mathematical but you don't almost, think right? you do it just not in not in the on the stand-up stage you are witty and funny but and i can't kind of write in the like i couldn't i don't have a you guys can look at a situation and have a, you know a twisted but i always say that to people who are on america tell me it's about got it, talent. Buddy. Right. Tell me about it. But you could hire a writer. Yeah, I do. You know, but yeah, but but I, I'd rather just be a fan. I love all. I knew Shandling a little bit um, through through Bob and Dave. I got to meet a lot of great. You know, that's how I met. I met Shandling through Bob. Yeah. Well, because uh, he brought out. Um, Brett. Brett. Shandling Brad. was great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we shared a birthday. You and Shandling. Me and November 29th. Wow. Yes. What do you? Um, did you guys meet in Canada? Yeah. Yep. He was there the first night I got on stage. Yeah. Wow. The very first time I ever tried an what amateur. Name? My, my name? No, I know. Yeah, your say name. your name. Just say your name again. <laughs> Lou. Frank. Was he funny the first time? Howie? Yeah. This guy? Brilliant. Was, I, I, let I, me just tell you the truth. I've said this story before and I'll say it again. Please do. We were all trying to be comics. Mm -hmm. Howie went on and blew the roof off the fucking place. The very By first accident, time. By accident, but I didn't know what I was doing. Very yeah, first time. And I, I will also add... I've actually seen him make girls piss themselves from laughing so hard. <laughs> no, that's a urinary tract infection. A lot of people have given, <laughs> I've given a lot of people no, a, a UTI. A, he was and, so funny. Was he funny as a, as a no. growing up as a dad? No, so no. you were serious at home and stuff. And w Nothing funny about me as far as being my dad. And I'm not trying to be silly. Like his certain phobias and his, his things, and he talks about being his depression and stuff. Did that, did he keep that away from you guys for no. the most part? No. no. 
No, in and, fact, she's in therapy right now because of it. Because not of what? Because of you. Because well, because genetics, I guess it was uh -huh. passed down a little bit. So I inherited a lot of the same stuff in the, terms of like anxiety, not germs. Uh -huh. What it are you just, anxious about? What is everything. It? General anx anxiety like, and socialization, like socializing you, with other people. Uh -huh. I don't know everything. And being a parent does that give you anxiety? Yeah, everything. Is it I mean, obvious it that you're, just general. Is, is it obvious that you're a parent? Is it obvious that I'm a parent? Do I like you, that. Uh, <laughs> use a pun, go to jail. Do you, do you, do you, but your kids are great. How old are the kids? Five and seven. Right. Yeah. And th is that, so that's your, so what are they, what Nothing do they tell you to Nothing freaks you out call? more. Like, yeah, right. Is, do you meditate or how, how does it? I try. I'm trying to figure out what works for me. I mean, it's still She's a had process. a really rough couple of years. You know, for the uh, the pandemic has not been oh, easy right, on right. anybody, and not that I'm complaining, but I think she took it especially. Why? She was lot. What do you mean? Why? Everybody why, takes why it differently. Why did she take it especially hard? You're saying she didn't go out of the house because for the two whole years. world stopped. That's what <laughs> right. was so scary, you know. And you think, and you guys probably you, you get this that you th we think we have some sort of control. No, we don't have control. No, and that pandemic showed us we have we've never have control. We don't that's have any right. control that's over very anything. Good that's very good point, probably, John. You know, well, and also I'm really good at distracting myself usually but when you're stuck at home with no distractions then my mind just goes you and know that's what when i, I got to in a dark place i smoked more than i ever have i started smoking during the, the i started smoking cigarettes during the cigarettes. pandemic yeah. and i drank i smoked and drank i drank day. i drank and did. smoked too uh, uh yeah, cannabis uh, no i smoked uh, uh i smoked uh, tobacco tobacco but you've always been a smoker oh that's true it's uh, it, it really I, I get it I get it. but I would think the but you guys' phobia about being outside and being around germs and not being social that fit in perfectly with the whole pandemic right that you got to stay home and you no but she has social anxiety right. anxiety in general can mm. manifest in different ways so but, if it's not around people then it's going to manifest in a different way but it's like what you just said John it's about not having any control even though Howie is a germaphobe and it would rather not associate associate with other people as soon as he can't. It becomes but I the have biggest no issue for my daughter and me was not the germophobia of the pandemic. It was the inability to distract. Distract is what right. keeps us uh, comfortable. If your mm -hmm. mind's going to a dark place and you have repetitive thoughts right. or you have worries or you have depression, you can even sitting here doing a podcast right. is a great distraction because right. unless we're talking about it like now, that's not distracting. But Sorry. if you're Sorry. just having if you're just having a good time or you're doing something, you can only it's very hard to multitask mentally and that's what that's what keeps right. us both and somewhat I take, sane i take the distraction and add an additional distraction two distractions so three times the distraction because of my presence got it um this is great that you share this with people you're I think welcome it's so you're very welcome because i talking know to us. for years that people <laughs> for years people kept this quiet and everybody thought and they were sitting at home going i don't know this problem and i think it's really inspiring oh, no. that you guys talk about it and and get it out there because now it's more than ever right with kids you're talking you were asking me about parenting i think that that mm -hmm. was the best thing that he could have given me was being honest and open mm -hmm. about whatever it was he was dealing with mm -hmm. because then it gave me insight and in, yeah license to feel the way i felt right. and was not there was no stigma around it because right. i saw it with my dad so but there is you know i felt the stigma originally coming you know it was on the howard stern show that i came out with it but uh, so much right, happens right. on Howard. as somebody growing <laughs> uh, you know growing up in the 50s and still as but I he's traveled, also fucked up too right howard stern also has he says he is yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you guys but, have a lot of the same problems. Yeah, I think we all do. I think what's but amazing, you were, you kept it quiet for a long time, right? Like of course, like, I would never even tell people public, I would yeah. go to a psychiatrist. Right. I wouldn't tell people, you know, even I was having a hard time dealing with the pandemic, and right. I started I started with gummies to try to sleep, oh. and then I took a ton of gummies, and then I was taking gummies, but I think my my resistance was up, and I started drinking, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to, and then I started that wasn't enough, so I was smoking. You know, I'd roll a blunt and really? and, and smoke and then take gummies and drink. I have not, now I'm I'm sober. I got and scared. I went too far. You're and now, now you're off of AGT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for saying this? Yeah. So you, yeah. Is that a bad thing to say? I mean, no. it's legal, but I don't know. You it's, know, this uh, is something well, I'm interesting. I'm clean right now. And I don't know yeah. if you know this or not. John, you may not know this. I don't. Like, uh, the, the, you the, don't know if you do. You don't, you, don't, you don't know. He's saying I don't want to. <laughs> no, you, no. You what started, I'm saying, you picked up on him so this fast. This is interesting. He's funny. I kid him most, because he's kidding. Right? Listen, most like uh, most of the planet's ice cream is, and I've just found this out the other day. Right. Most of the planet's ice cream is being kept frozen until the appropriate time. 
we can cut some of this out, right? This is not live. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can tell, you can just, we never you, do. Keep we don't. Though. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm we kidding, don't. Lou. You're here for. It's good because you're we're getting very. You're, we're getting very serious, and then you pop in. And you don't you know. think he's serious? No, I'm. I'm dead serious. No, but we're. Oh, by the way, asking. So yeah. you've been. You doing don't that. want to thought. I. You think. know, a lot of people do that. They keep themselves busy to. to you know, if, if, they, if they're not in a relationship, they go out. Oh, so busy. And so that was the thing with you guys. So then when it stopped, but then but, you, but you, we couldn't even you, work. You were working. I wasn't a little bit. Well, we. Go ahead, I'm sorry. You weren't working a lot? You were working on the, the show that you're doing now yeah, it's all the pandemic. That's right, yeah. I mean, we stopped for six months or eight months or something. Then we went back. and then Did we you ever, have, actually get I never COVID? got it, no. Oh, you were quarantined God. because somebody on the set had it? Three times. Wow. Yeah, that was when we were supposed to do the Ellen thing. Ellen thing. Yeah. So that's but why it's, I, but the only good thing for me has been I got to spend so much time with my son. The, be, being at the restaurant that couple of weeks ago, we were, and it was so, because he, you know, he, Billy. Kids naturally go towards, <laughs> is that his name? Go towards Howie and 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 my son loves funny. He loves to be funny. He we, he he, he watches, is a performer. Well, he does. He's not. He gets very shy. He doesn't do bits. He doesn't like if I t just to do the impression. I don't know. But he we watch Bill Irwin a lot. I work with him on Bye Bye Birdie. He's a great mime and mimic. And he I gotta call Bill and tell him this. And he does he call, does the bits that Bill. Irwin, he's always got bits. He calls them bits. Mm -hmm. And he gravitated towards Howie so fast. It was so beautiful. And then I was like, get over here. And they were throwing pillows in a restaurant. I said, stop that. And then he came over. And of course, Howie would get you know do that. And then he came over and I show and I was showing him videos of you on my phone when you're doing the because he wanted he was fascinated with. I told him you the put glove. the glove over your head. Yeah. yeah. So then he went back and it was a really sweet, very cute moment. And I have it. Well, it's a cute, yeah. cute moment watching him with his son and interact with your son. I mean, it's a great, and enjoy it, man, because it goes so yeah. fast. Oh, then yes, they become yes, adults yes. and they have How old babies. He's, he's, he's five? Three and a half. Three and a half? Oh my gosh. What? Shit, that's that's like, he's like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> he's got Wait, a, let me uh, ask you, did you believe oh. people? Oh, there he is. Oh, oh my God. So, he's he has such a beautiful family. What's his name? Thank you. What's Bill, uh, Billy. Billy, after my father's name was Bill. So. Oh, my, my father's name was Steve. Are you really, uh, <laughs> what are you, are you really Greek or Macedonian? Greek Macedonian. That's and, the same with Rita Wilson, I think. Uh, is she Greek Macedonian? Yeah. Oh, well, we're the exact same. Yeah. Except, no, you're nothing. So like no, we're nothing, nothing at all like her. But you know, here's something. Do you believe? Do you believe people can tell the future? No. Do you believe? Yeah, because if they could, right, right, right. they'd be psychic. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever? Yeah. What was his act like? Did you have? A <laughs> you're listening to it. This is what did it was you do like. One liner. Let me tell you, it was so hard. It was so hard during COVID. I had to make people laugh. One at a time. Yeah, it's hard. I had to go up to individuals and tap them on the shoulder at the right end and say, it's good to be here. Yeah. I just got back from the Walgreens. It's good to be here. Where do you live, Lou? <laughs> in uh, uh, under, Sh under Sherman Oaks, <laughs> California. Do you live? Do you is he, is he your Kato? He's your Kato, is he? Yeah. <laughs> it's my Kato. He lives at the guest house. Have you guys him. been really good friends all these years? No. No. I no. just met him. Uh, <laughs> Seriously. No. no, he pissed him off. They weren't friends. He no, pissed I'm him off? I pissed him off. How did you, did you steal one of his <laughs> terrible jokes? No, I did practical <laughs> jokes on him and it he went too played, far. He played some, what? Howie is one of the funniest, most creative people you're ever going to meet. He's a beautiful man. And he can, at a moment's notice, can create and concoct an elaborate scheme that will alter your life forever. He can do that. He flew cross country in a dress because, against his will. Be, only because the pantsuit wouldn't match the boots. Isn't it exhausting coming up with those? Th I mean, let, let, no, let it just cleaning. happens okay. and I just go with it. And really? let me just so say this, the last, but time you... I, the last time I wore a dress, Jean, yeah, was the last time I wore a dress. Lunth. <laughs> I wore Why a dress. Why are you wearing a TH? Lunth. That's what I call my nephew, John. I call you Lunth. Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's a sweet guy. That's the thing. He is a sweet so guy. So you got mad. You didn't talk to him for a long time. And then he said, hey, I, I'll give you a I job. I had him Come believe back. that he had a, uh, he, I made him believe have that you, he had a son. Have you pissed anybody? <laughs> That's a good one. Well, you, it wasn't got, because right. the kid, I pulled the story. cancer or something too? There was, there was that. I and, saw, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That's Not, always terrible. Some of his jokes you can't aren't do, nice. You, you no, can't, some of his, but he was a kid at the time. He wasn't Who, thinking nice, not nice. Howie? He me? Was thinking, yeah, I was just in my 30s. What do you want from me? <laughs> What's the matter with you? No, you, you were can't just thinking, that. how can I get through this next moment right. without uh, killing myself? So I know what I'll do. Things. I'll send the cancer patient. No, it wasn't a That's cancer terrible. patient. It was a kid that came to your door <laughs> with a note saying that uh, you don't remember right, me. Right. It was a waitress yeah. that you were with at a comedy club. Right, right. She, uh, she had passed away because of cancer, and this was the fruit of our evening. Fruit of yeah. our evening. And then I got the kid on the phone because uh, I, I, I acted like I didn't believe the kid was there. It was right. at midnight, mm -hmm. and he was uh, he had just gotten out of bed. He's in his underpants, <laughs> and he's in a in a and and yeah. I told the kid. I said I don't believe it. Let me speak to the kid, and I told the kid to yell, "You don't love me. You don't care for me," and run. 
run out the door and there'll be a car for you waiting around the corner. Yeah. The kid yelled, you don't love me, you don't care for me. And the kid ran out of the apartment and he ran out of the apartment in his underpants going, I love you, I just want to care for you. <laughs> and they called the cops because he was running after a yes, seven-year-old yeah. little boy in his underpants. Did you film it? How did you get, how did no, it's it? It's all just for him. It's all memory. You were there? No, but no, it doesn't have to be. It's all just for him. He doesn't no, film most of his not practical only did you jokes. Call, but Michael Rotenberg called. Everybody called, and they were like conspiring to get me. It was. It's just, exhausting, all that, isn't it? Let, leave it to Clooney. No, Clooney. man. It wasn't. When I was on, you know, George Clooney, was, yeah, a, was, a, was a big practical. And I girl. came on after he was on ER, but they still had that thing. I was like, come on, guys, that's not that fucking practical joke. My I, favorite practical joke he did to his roommate. What's yeah. it? What's the guy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, he shit in the cow. Like, yeah. Box. Yeah. Um, the one I like guy? is where he yeah. gave all of his friends a million dollars. That was a great. Yeah, that's a funny one. Yeah. Joke. Um. What was that? What's that? That's uh, God. I work with him. He's so funny too. He's on. He's on Kirby Enthusiasm. He's on. Bob, Bob, uh, Larry uh, Johnson. No. no, you guys know who he, he was on. Does uh, anybody there know who the guy that he lived with was? He was on Mad Talks About like You. This. He's got a great. You know. He was on Mad About oh, he's You. He's gonna kill us. The I, audience. If you. If you. I hope can, he's not listening. Can you add? You're hey. Clooney's roommate. What's his not name? Mad About You. Not Larry David. No, 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 no. Clooney's roommate. Oh, wait, there, there he Richard is. Kind, Richard, Richard Kind. Richard, Richard. See, he lived with uh, Richard Kind, and Richard Kind had a cat. And when Richard Kind was went out one day, George Clooney took this giant shit in in the cat, cat in the cat litter in the cat yeah. box, and it was just this tiny little kitten. <laughs> And then Richard came home and saw this giant pile of shit three times the size of the cat and took it to the vet because right. how does a little cat like that take a shit? And George Clooney never told him it was him well, that shit. Is oh horrific. my gosh, did you hear? Just think of him sitting over a, a, a cat litter box taking yeah, that's a dump. Not that's not so funny. Did you, but the punchline's beautiful. Did you hear about the date that that woman went on and she pooped in the guy's toilet it wouldn't flush and she was mortified so she took it out and put it in the kitty litter and then went out and then the guy went to the bathroom and was like my cat died like two months ago <laughs> <laughs> that's, that move. that's a punchline that's, 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 that's as good as the george clooney the george clooney the ghost thing. of the cat instead yeah. of boo it but there's poo. a there's a um yeah. see what i did okay. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad joke. so what happens when this ends do you guys get depressed again or yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be. I'm not making a joke about it. Like when, it's, so you just gotta keep. I'm just fascinated. That's by it. why all these episodes go for like two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, right. I just say whenever you want to leave. No, I, feel free. I, don't, I feel bad. I don't want to leave. You guys. No, I know. We're just doing this. This is. A but I get that. I totally. I mean, there's a lot of people that have lighter versions that are and heavy versions of it where they just feel like they gotta keep moving, keep going. Or but that's then, me. And I'm medicated. And I speak to a therapist. She talks it, to a therapist. Can you? But have you found moments where you could just sit and? Be with yourself and no, and relax. No, I'm the worst. Really? I'm the Never, worst huh? company for myself. I hate being well, with me. Well, I, live I right hate nighttime. Come by my house anytime. I love being with. I'm completely different when I'm alone. You guys were. Who's phone? Oh, that's that's. Is that you, Lou? That's your agent, Lou. Lou, who's There's, calling? Does Lou have an agent? Sean. Who is it? Wait. Hello. Yeah. Who's this? Let me talk to her. Who's this? Hi. This is Sarah Lawson from the Department of Visa and Mastercard. Oh, okay. hi, Sarah. Okay. Did yeah. I spend too much? Here, I, paid, I paid my last bill. My name is Sarah Lawson, and yep. I'm calling from the Debt Elimination Department. Okay. Due to the pandemic and financial crisis, you are eligible for the debt elimination of your entire credit card debt. Under oh, the fair take credit care of it, John. Take care of it. the lender's inability to follow their own Oh, policy. I'll tell you what to right. Would you like me to provide you with more information? <laughs> yeah. Yes, program? please. Yeah, could you please? And what's my, how much do I owe now on that card, that particular card? Oh, uh, it hung up. Uh, how did it hang up? I don't know. What well, did you say to them? What did you say? Should we call back? Them off. Was that? That was a. Uh, I don't even have a visa. It wasn't card. a scam because the only one that's a scam is the extended warranty. No, I don't even. Does have anybody uh, there have a question for John? Uh, I think that is a no. Okay. <laughs> the guy in the green turtleneck. Hey, you, you in the green turtleneck? Hey. <laughs> that's a. Hey okay. you. Hey you. Hey you. In the green turtleneck. Yeah, it's me. Okay. I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so we got a submission asking about how you guys have told oh. that story about you and Lou and how you did the prank. Beautiful. But what is the there. story of how you became friends again? And how did you rekindle I never this? stopped being how he, he offered show, him a job. He, show, and he, he showed, up. showed up and I gave him chips and he's here on the podcast. <laughs> Listen, light, light, we all live our lives. We all have other priorities. We all kind of move on and things change. And... I just, I think Howie and I have been friends since we met, 
and we'll be friends forever, regardless of the shit that may have happened. I just I think, think that I think you and John have become closer. I today. think John and I, I would, are I would still spend close. More time with him. We're as you close. Would? I would, yeah. We're as close now as we've been. Remember the first time I met you? Yeah, Greece. Yeah, well, I was in, first time. Yeah, we were in Greece about ten and, minutes. Have you uh, actually Mykonos, gone to Greece? The gay island. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's where she had her honeymoon. In Mykonos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went there on my honeymoon too, and it was the other first wedding. First marriage. And it was weird because we were pulling up, we're on this boat, and it was great. Mykonos is so beautiful. And I was getting closer and I was like, hey, man, look at there was there was I could see just nude people jumping off rocks. I go, this is gonna be great. Nude and then I, as I got closer, it was just like just naked guys. It's more naked only guys. Naked. I was like, naked. Is that yeah. all it is? All it's guys. all naked <laughs> men. I see it was honeymoon. amazing. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I saw her honeymoon pictures and it's her and her husband in a boat. Just within... like a bunch of penises <laughs> behind us. <laughs> so it's, it's a Mykonos is a gay island if it's not uh, they're in the wrong place. no they're just yeah, the anti-bathing suit <laughs> no it's a great it's a beautiful island beautiful people there and then we i think we went on to some you should have gone to island. lesbos do you, do you speak <laughs> do you speak uh uh greek? I, I know some dirty words but that's it no, but did your uh my speaks dad as did, much yeah. greek as i do i, sp I went to uh, i spent some time in greece when but your parents didn't time. speak english right no my mother never spoke any english my mother uh she didn't the speak very after first having words, you, probably. The very first words my mother ever learned in English were how much, uh -huh. followed by too much. You're not a Jewish, right? No. He's Jew You're Jewish. My mother I'm was Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. How much? How many Jews in Canada? Too much. Two, three? How many Jews in Canada? Yeah. I don't I'm gonna know. going to say 18, but that's why I don't do ethnic jokes. I love Canada, by the way. <gasps> right. I, I spent a lot of time there with the Beach Boys, and some of my favorite. I went, uh, there was a, t I think it was in the late 90s, Brian Wilson had, they sort of took him away, and Dr. Landy, and they, oh, they kidnapped story, him in yeah. Hawaii, and they cleaned him up, and he came back, and he was great. And there was a clause in the contract, I think, where they had to have a certain amount of original Beach Boys on stage, and Mike was in India or somewhere, and so Brian came out for like five shows. Wow. Brian Wilson. And he was great. He was charming. He was great. Brian Wilson, funny, singing all the songs. And one night after, and they were filming everything because he was with Landy and all his people, and they kept, you know, kept videos on him. I have the video of us. We broke into this. We were at the Four Seasons in, in Toronto. Yeah, and, that's where we always stay, right? right? Mm -hmm. And there was a, a he, we finished the show. I can't remember. I can't remember where it was. It was the 3rd of July, because it was the 4th. You guys celebrate on the 3rd of July or something? 1st. First Canada thing. Day. I think that's what, yeah, that's where we were there. And then we went on to the 4th of July. But he he wanted to play piano. And there was a piano in a in a uh, ballroom somewhere, but it was locked. And the, the video, you could hear him banging on the door. Please, sir, please let me in. Please. And we sat there for two and a half hours, and he played everything. And he starts writing a song. Stamos, you sing bass. I rock, roll, rock. And you sing this part. You sing. There was like four of us in there. It was beautiful. Oh, wow, what an amazing. And you videotaped it. Yeah, they did. They, you know, they, but I have it. Yeah. They, That's awesome. That's a, you that have cool. such amazing moments. You're not an old oh, man, guy, so but lucky. you have. So, you are lucky. Yeah. And but not only are you lucky, but you appreciate it. And when oh, you man. appreciate it, then we appreciate it. Listening to you, well, appreciate you, you, it. You yeah. have. I've always been grateful, and I, and I was like trying to tell people like. Like we, this is as good as it gets. I mean, this we gotta really enjoy this. But 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 I am so blessed, and I have to every day. I just make lists of all the things I'm grateful for, and it's the only way to keep me, you know, you know. You enjoy married life. Real. I am, yeah, I am. Like it's, I you know, always say, if you can't be grateful, and I've told this to people, go ahead, Lou. If you can't be grateful, <laughs> be, for something. Yeah. Send me eleven dollars. This is the That's way true. I kind of makes get sense. people to be grateful. Yeah. So it's Aren't so, you guys grateful for? I'm grateful each right? and every day. I've been married a long time though. I've been married like 42 years. How You've does been that work? For, four, I think. <laughs> how, is a, how does that work? 42 years? You guys years? are best friends, all that stuff? Yeah. Kind of thing? Yes. She should be a saint. Forget she saint is Amos. a saint. She's Saint Terry. Because she is. She deserves, you, uh, you know. oh my God, you She's have great. no idea the hell that but it is. But you're so so sweet and so charming and so friendly. I don't mean She just has never last... said that. I love that you're here but, saying but, it because my wife but has But am I wrong? Really like he's that. he's you're, you're just a really lovely man and See? and I've known you for years but not as well as I have now but you've always been lovely back then. I mean you, you know you're a really I don't you know, see I don't know people listening but do you do you see any I'm not negating I'm it. I know that's a real issue. I'm annoying. All your issues are real but I, I don't feel those. I know we don't, you I don't wouldn't. live with you. Okay. But right. you wouldn't okay. and I work really hard at, at masking them. You know mm -hmm. even though I talk about them. I work hard at masking them. I, mm -hmm. I work really hard at um, kind of uh, uh, dealing with it in the not only masking it but right. trying to how, not. When do you fall asleep? How do you fall asleep? If you're, if are you taking medication? Today? Now I'm not. Now I'm. I'm so you I'm just clean. pass out. You just. I try to work and stay awake and do things until I. Pass he doesn't out. sleep. He was I just on the East Coast recently, and I was getting text messages from him at like eleven o'clock at night this time. So you were not sleeping. No, I don't sleep. No. And then you get up at six or seven and you go go. go. I just don't sleep. I just really? can't. You, I can't you sleep. Spend whole nights not sleeping. Because 
because when it's quiet, but you go, that'll make you crazy, man. I am crazy. No, you're not. Oh, you don't know me, John. Do you know what I found out? Do you know 50% of people don't have like an inner voice, an inner dialogue that goes on in their head? What does that even mean? You know how I'm assuming you have it too, where you literally have a voice when you're thinking like Mm -hmm. telling you this and you're thinking that and you're thinking, what if this and I need to do that? There's a whole group of people that literally don't have... Just I have voices or thoughts in their head going on. Thoughts? I have lose voice all, yes. all the time. It's a good well, what, you want to hear? Let me think. Let me go think. Ahead, go ahead. Here, I'm going to think about what I'm going to do when I get in the car and go and drive home. You know what I do is I listen to 60s music and then I wonder what were those people listening to back then. That's my inner thought right there, guys. Wow. I know. John, it's, weird, so, right? it's amazing here, that you would open one. up your inner thoughts. Here's another thought. Here's another Give bo- us another thought, here, John. It's, a, it's about my sexuality. <laughs> it's about your sexuality. Go yeah. ahead. You should have seen the show with Dave Dubrick. He's not. He's not an ad lib. He's not good at ad libbing. No. I mean, he's better with written stuff. Right? Yeah, I'm really good with written stuff. I mean, we set up a great improv for him, and he shit all over it. That's What's right. going on in John Stamos's head? You are the voice in John Stamos's I don't head. Think he's you understood know, a bit. Uh, well, the audience is falling. Well, what do you guys want to hear? What do you want to? Is there anything that I could say? Thank or you for the effort, you. John. We're, we're going to wrap this up in you, just a second. So, uh, hey, look, I said we're going to wrap it up. Oh, the guy with the green shirt that you called on three years ago. <laughs> He's been planning. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Uh, what's the what's what's the favorite most favorite show you worked on, and what was the favorite moment from shooting that show? I'll answer that. Okay, no. go ahead. Go ahead. You're the voice in his head. Go no. ahead, answer. I really liked Full House. No, that wouldn't be it. No, <laughs> but then I thought uh, after I did it, no, I don't fucking like that show. But I did a thing with Ben Gazzara once. <laughs> I'm gonna and- look that up. I worked with. Uh, I did a cabaret after How to Succeed in Business on Broadway. That was, I think, one of my all time. It was a. The show was so. Good. Did you ever see the show? Sure. Uh, on Broadway. Uh, I didn't see it on Broadway. It's such a powerful show, and and um, that was a special one. You know, I, I saw it here with Terry Hatcher. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, that's good. I'm trying to think of where <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I love this new show I'm doing. David uh, Kelly writes, and it's you're really fun. good in it. And here's the coach. other thing: yeah. so he's playing the coach of a. You got to catch it. And wanna, it's, wanna, season two is David coming up Kelly. now. He's a really good. He's such a great wordsmith. But yeah. the, but the the point being is, I had no idea because I watch the show, and you're really good in it. He, he knows fuck all about sports, I don't about know. basketball, but he plays this kind of seasoned acting. Called, you were on Saint Elsewhere, and you were very good it's on Saint Elsewhere. You don't know how to be a doctor, do you? Yeah. Oh, did you right. play a doctor you played a doctor on there I you did. were brilliant that's to me i was like you're talking about me like you're a guy who's done every fucking thing and not only that but you you're you're, you're a real like you put He's stuff you put shit together he can i'm trying i mean you he do thinks, i'm trying but that's why anybody. i feel akin I mean, to you. i feel like but i'm no, you. i'm not in your league because i'm yeah you because are because i'm not as i don't have anxiety like you do but i but i will after okay. working I'm with watching Lou. Mr. Mercedes. Mr. <laughs> Mercedes is a David Kelly show, right? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It's a yes. it's a, right. been around. Have you for, seen Lou, have you seen E.T.? It's a good movie. Never saw it. I'm actually the president of the fan club of those that never saw E.T. Really? It's me and two other Macedonians. We got we can't end on when that. do you have we the can't. <laughs> we can't end on that we can't we gotta do something. then was, you know what let's end on something with john stamos is uh, great i want you to listen to the podcast what do you, what's the name of the podcast again it's called uh uh the grand scheme snatching sinatra i'm yeah, gonna it's want a good I'm one. Gonna grand scheme fun. snatching uh, sinatra i also want people to go to this cine lounge when you have a chance it seems cine to me lounge. check it out the, uh, uh, the cine lounge and they have two locations one Pardon me, they're applauding. Does, um, but it looks like a real comfortable place to go see a movie and Tarantino support movies. Own it? And you can get popcorn. I don't know who owns Does it. Does Tarantino, or didn't he, did he buy some of those things? I think he bought the <laughs> Cineplex Dome yeah. or Cinerama Dome. That sounds great, though. I will go there for I sure. And I want to try the popcorn, too. And, we'll, and, and popcorn. And also, uh, they're funding the film business. They're not only showing it and, that, and doing that, so they're great. So I want to thank them thank for you. being part of and our Jackie's little experiment. Birthday. Now, what did we get her for her birthday? I brought her a gift. Uh, but what did you get her, her dad? I'm going to put my name on your card on okay thing. no actually the thing you picked up the thing that this thing? play-doh yeah. that showed up on the desk today okay. as a birthday present oh, got her these. don't Sorry. break it Sorry, well, I, got, I got her uh, who is this from is I this from her, you rich yeah i got her a tether ball do uh, we have we sang happy birthday yet yeah they did, uh, they did. but they did. but but not on air they, yeah. they did, they did. But, i mean yeah. when she wasn't even here they but would. i didn't hear you're Lou? welcome to sing yes. it again to me can we do a little happy birthday for happy birthday to you to you Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Happy birthday to you. 
<laughs> All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Please, uh, I want you to review. I want you to subscribe. I want you to buy merch. It's available. If you do buy the merch, send us a picture. We'll uh, share it with everybody. Until next week, this is Howie Mandel. Thank you, Howie. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. God bless you Thank guys. You. Thank you. Boom. God bless you, Mr. Stamos. <laughs> I think that was really good. It's funny and informative and touching and nice. And we, we just, it's very loose. Well, all of that's what they all say.